Good evening, everyone. My name is Rudy Page, and welcome to the launch of the Montserrat Growth Hub, a new 21st century learning and skills organization designed to meet the needs of Montserrat's local communities. I would now like to ask Pastor David Daniel to say a prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, everyone. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you right now for the opportunity, Lord, to give you thanks, first of all, for all of our lives, Lord, and we thank you for this beautiful island, Lord, of Montserrat, and for the rich legacy that has come from this beautiful island over the years. We thank you that your hand has been on this island, Lord, and despite the challenges, Lord God, we thank you that you have preserved this beautiful island, Father. And I, I thank you, Father, for what you are going to do going forward. Lord, we're living in unprecedented times. Lord, incredible challenges. But I thank you that your hand is upon Montserrat, Lord. And Father, even as we, Lord, launch, Lord, today, Lord, this beautiful, wonderful initiative which would enhance the lives of many people. We pray that your hand will be upon this organization, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you will be the inspiration behind it. You'll give the energy. You'll give the drive and desire, Lord, and vision, Lord, so that as the hub goes forward, Lord, as the growth, Lord, is experienced, Father, we can truly say that this is the work of God. This is the hand of God. Father, we pray that indeed, that young people on the island will begin to believe, that they'll know that there is a hope, that there are things that they can achieve, that there's a future for them. I pray that they'll make use, Lord God, of all the facilities that will give them counseling, Lord, mentorship, prepare them for a future, Lord, of work. And I pray, Father, that you would just re rekindle that fire, that flame of hope and belief and expectation, Lord. Help them to know that they can achieve great things, Father. We thank you for the families and the many that have come from, from that island over the years and the great things that have been achieved and created and, and done, Lord. But Lord, we pray for those who are there even right now, young and old, Lord that you give them a sense, Lord, of purpose, Lord, a sense of that you have not finished with the island, Lord, and that you're doing a work in the people's lives. So, Father, we pray, Lord, for the hub as it goes forward, Lord God. We pray that we will truly see growth and that, Lord God, that you're, you'll be glorified, Lord, and honoured for all of the things that happen. We pray this and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Pastor. You're welcome. Yolanda?
Thank you very much. That, that was great. And that's actually a, a great start for us to speak to Carol Ryan, the, the, the visionary behind the Montserrat Growth Hub. Carol, good evening. Okay, Carol. hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name Carol Ryan, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of the Montserrat Growth Hub. Great. Over to you. <laughs> Great. And Carol, so the Montserrat Growth Hub, first of all, tell us about yourself and a bit about yourself and your, and your, and your background. Okay. Um, firstly, um, I'm a visionary, a motivator and a born leader with a vision for change and improvement for success. Both my parents and few of my siblings were born in Montserrat, Cork Hill, and my dad was born in Windy Hill. My parents moved to the UK and had eight more children, and I'm the youngest of 11. In 2005, I became a director and the CEO of two businesses in London. The first one was Cyber Juices and the next one was Fresh Start Community Link. I also managed two communities in London and I've also had a passion to support and help people to strive and achieve their goals. Over the years, I've had the privilege and the opportunity to work with various corporations, businesses. Um, I've gained so much experience around business whilst working for the local government, the hospital, British telecoms, construction, you name it, I've done quite a lot, even working in banks and in firms. This has prompted me to always have an aim, to aim higher and to go for what I believe in. Thank you. That's a, that's a great and rounded um, journey that you've taken to get this <laughs> far. So very well done. So, so in the end, what was it inspired you to drive for this Montserrat Growth Hub? What was the inspiration? 
My inspiration came when I first arrived in 1985 and continued to visit Montserrat as a holiday. Through my career, uh, through oh, my have been joined and don't know any difference. Sorry, something's just come. Keep going. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me start again. Um, my inspiration came when I first travelled to Montreal in 1985, 1985, and I was travelling as on holiday throughout that period of time. Um, I could see so much potential for the island of Montserrat and what it had to offer if only people could see and would invest in their own country. I immediately knew that I would one day be working towards building people's mindsets to grow the island and to work with, to give them work experience I had and what I experienced in England. There's quite a lot I've actually done um, and I've seen in Montserrat. The MGH's mission is to bring about change to people's mindsets with a can-do attitude. We are dedicated to encourage people to aspire and to give themselves permission to live life of abundance on the island. Montserrat for, um, for decades has been one of the most beautiful and peaceful islands in the Caribbean, which most of you are aware of, which makes it unique and a cut above the rest. I want to encourage Montserratians to return home with their skills and their bit well, from what they've learned in their business life and the training to give back to the community and we build a beautiful place called home. Together, as I've always said, we can do it. Excellent, excellent. And we can see the vision and we can understand the mission. So you have a pattern for a passion for, for young people and community development. So, so where does that come from then? It comes from when I was the CEO of Cyber Juices, where I provide internet the internet of freshly made juices in my internet cafe i realized in hackney clapton where there were young people that would have wanted to learn how to use the internet they wanted their confidence to be built they wanted to know how to do cvs to fill out application forms to get an understanding of how to use the computers i saw a great need to support them and this was the birth of fresh start community link mm -hmm. Captain Park area was um, classed as the, high areas, the highest risk areas where there was a lot of crime. So in respect of that, that's where I've built up the opportunity to say this is what I would love to do one day in Montserrat to support young people and get them into work and let them have this can-do attitude that they can do whatever they put their minds to. Excellent. And... Um... As you've highlighted, the Montserrat Growth Hub in itself, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it is about the 21st century learning and skills. And of course, in 21st century skills are collaboration, creativity, communication, and critical thinking. So it's, it's, it's very good that this hub will be focusing, as uh, Carol has already said, on the mindset shift. Also the hub will develop and create cohesion, cohesion amongst the local communities and supporting skills and employment development. And, particular, and, and in particular, preparing the youth to be able to access further education, permanent employment, promoting entrepreneurship and self-employment. The hub will actually provide ongoing and personalized support. So giving opportunity for real work experience to improve skills and, and employability. And most importantly, for individuals to actually uh, learn about how they can make best use of their skills and earning potential. The other important thing about the hub, it's a safe environment and it's about innovation. So it's open to the skills and ideas that, that young people and adults may have. 
And that's the other good thing about the hub itself. It's about adult learning as well, which is also as Im important in this digital age as well. Yes. The, uh, the hub also, Montserrat Growth Hub will also provide general advice on daily living, especially issues of our time and also will support people in their work as it relates to performance and improvement. So there'll be support for CV writing, interview preparation, helping people fill in interview forms, job applications, and also to access online, online learning, supporting, supporting people with their business ideas and uh, etiquette and hospitality skills for training for young people. So as Carol has already said, the Monstrat Growth Hub will encourage people to dream and inspire, to give themselves permission to live a life of abundance with a clear focus for a better future for themselves by, by adopting a can-do attitude. And also what's good about the hub as well, it's also about socializing. So there'll be coffee mornings, there'll be let's talk tea club sessions, particularly targeting at uh, mature adults. There'll be counseling support for all. And the focus most importantly in this time, the focus on health and well-being. So Carol, I wish you all the best because this is a great, uh, enterprise yeah. that you've come on on and you know you've got our full support carry on so there's a little press release hazel i think hazel had um i had won an award years ago for what i had done in the community in the cat area in london i was awarded a gold medal by the prime minister gordon brown and his wife i was invited to a reception um, and commended for uplifting, educating and supporting young people within the community. And with that being said, just knowing that you never know where training can lead you. And this is the same thing that we wanted to encourage young people, that if they put their minds to it, we'll be able to support them. We'll also try to let them know that there is always something out there for them once they believe. And I give God thanks, first and foremost. I, I, I have to mention God in this as well. I have to give God thanks for the ability to even have the opportunity to, to want to bring this to form and to have a strong team behind me. This couldn't have been brought to this stage at this time without a strong team that we have. So I'd like to thank them. Hazel, are you there? Are you able to just read the press release? Yes, there? I am here. Yes, I am here. Yes, I'm going to just read some sections from the award statement, which was um, given or done in nine, sorry, 2008. It says, the fact that you need to read succeed cannot be denied. Carol Ryan delivers this message daily through the provision of cyber sorry, sign a juice, an internet cafe based on Gillipin Square, hometown, East Hackney, on a deprived estate with multiple issues of economic and social deprivation. Carol is the heart of the community where she currently runs the Fresh Start Community Links programs, which is funded by the Words Unite grant. Carol, a Hackney resident herself, has made an impact on residents, fellow business and statutory sector service providers. When meeting Carol, you find that her passion and commitment to the community development is commendable. When talking to service users, you will hear echoes of how she has literally transformed the lives of men, women, and children. Many people have little hope and aspiration sometimes. What's left is just their pride and ego. Through her efforts, school leavers considered NEAT, that is not in education, employment, and training, have regained the confidence to strengthen their weaknesses. Carol recognizes that in a deprived area, 
people just need a little more time to address their issues. She and her team have provided one. One support and facilities such as use of a computer in a quiet space, accompanied by food cooked with TLC, that is tender love and care, to make residents feel at home. A memorable example of how her life-changing case study, sorry, a memorable example of a life-changing case study is that of a young gang member who stood in the middle of the estate. His peers feed in his ego and encourage him to get on his, to get his own back on a girl. Carol summoned the young man to the internet cafe for timeout. She urged him to reflect on his next steps. Rather than listen to his fears, she shared with him, I'm not telling you what to do, but the decision you make now could change the rest of your life. You have two choices. Either walk away from your friends or you can get your own back on this girl. The young man reflected, departed with a sigh. Carol from the inside of the cafe heard his resignation. Forget it, I'm off home, he said. Carol converted her back room and provided internet preparation for her students. She made it real by including local business and public service providers, and she helped everyone feel good. If Carol could assist you, she did. Carol, Carol was awarded for the work that she did, not just in the internet cafe, but also in the area of reading. And it is my privilege and my pleasure to welcome Carol to Montserrat. Well, it's a while that she's been here, several months, maybe over a year, but to the growth, Montserrat Growth Hub. And I look forward as being part of her team in providing assistance in our community. Carol, God bless you. And I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for that, Hazel. E excellent testimonial shows your determination and the compassion that you have for communities, Carol. Very well done. Just like to now um, introduce some of some other testimonials. So I'll start with uh, Dr. Ranelli Williams. If you're, if you're on, just make sure. Okay. If you could unmute. There we go. Great. And good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. And I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you this evening. Thank you for allowing my sisters and myself to sing for you this evening, um, Motherland. I am Dr. Ranelli Williams, born to Randolph Riley, who um, I know a lot of you know, and um, which is actually Hazel's hus um, husband. <laughs> Hazel is my stepmom and Elizabeth Lindsay, who was a nurse for several years on the island of Montserrat before we migrated to the United States in um, ooh, 1988. So some 30 plus years ago. And um, one of the things I can tell you is the reason for our migration was I had completed um, my um, going to secondary school, getting my O levels, and wanted the opportunity to go to university. And so my mom, being selfless, you know, packed us up and we migrated to the United States so that I can get a higher education. Um, you know, and I know that this opportunity is not afforded to many individuals. And so with this organization that Carol and her team is putting together, I feel like it would provide, you know, a lot of um, <clears throat> opportunities for people who can't necessarily, 
necessarily go away to university, but understanding that there are other opportunities as well. There is entrepreneurship. And in a world where we are so um, technologically driven, you know, here we are on Zoom, you know, launching this organization. Um, entrepreneurship is, you know, um, the opportunities are wide open. And I'm so excited that, you know, this is going to be part of what you bring to the Monstrat community. Um, just a little bit about myself um, and what I do. I am um, an accountant, I'm a CPA, and my husband, Eric, and myself, Eric is also Monstration, Eric Williams. Um, we own a tax and accounting business here in Pennsylvania where we live with our two boys. And um, you know what we do is provide these services to um, individuals as well as small business owners. Um, we started our business from the ground up um, eight years ago, and um, we know the struggle of entrepreneurship, but we also know um, the great benefits, right, that you can receive, you know, from it. And so I am pleased um, about what um, is being put together so that those of us in the diaspora, we can actually be, have an opportunity to support something like this to help um, Monstrations as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to however I'm able to contribute, however I'm able to support this cause. Um, I am definitely looking forward to you know, lending a hand, being able to give input, so don't hesitate to reach out to myself, to Eric. We are monstrations at heart. <laughs> and um, anything that's going to support and uplift um, the, the island, we are definitely for it. So um, kudos to you guys for putting this together. Thank, thank you very much for that. I'd now I'd like to ask Gillian McKenzie to say a few words. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Indeed. You can. Great. So I've written a few things down, so it may look as though I'm looking down to read things because I am. <laughs> right. So I'd like to say good afternoon and good night to some people. It is with great pleasure and an honor to be asked to give you an insight to some of my experience, knowledge, skills, and collaborative ways of working that will be transferred to help with building the Montserrat Growth Hub. My name is Gillian McKenzie, as we've said, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about me, a synopsis, a small synopsis of my work in history, my current business, and how I envisage supporting the, the Montserrat Growth Hub. Prior to my semi-retirement in 2013, I worked for the Department of Works and Pensions within various different job centres in the 33 boroughs of London. My main specialist area was helping people with disabilities to retrain, retain and gain employment among other um, management positions. But in the main, all related to helping people who were, as we've said, not in employment, education or training. So, you know, working also with partnerships, local authorities, governments, lots of different partners in health, housing, the justice, justice of the peace, namely the probation officers who help people re-establish, rehabilitate themselves back into the community after a life of crime. Also, private businesses to gain all types of training and work experience placements and vacancies. Some 30 years later, I took early retirement <clears throat> after working for DWP to pursue my love for giving back to the community 
My children had flown the nest and my children are descendants, direct descendants from uh, Montserrat, um, the island of Montserrat. Um, and so I pursued my love for looking after children. I became a foster carer. With that, I did that for four years until 2018. During this time, I planned, prepared, and then I launched my own business. So everybody has a little side hustle here and there, and that was mine. <laughs> uh, I was actually working as a foster carer, but actually I was pursuing my own business. That was my side hustle then, and it's my business now. So now I'm a natural hair Afro consultant, a hair educator, and I'm a coach, a hair coach. I help women, teenagers, and men fall back in love with their natural, God-given, beautiful Afro hair by increasing their knowledge about products. And some products are good, some are bad. And I, I won't say the other word, but you know, not, some are not so healthy for our bodies, let alone our hair. I also help um, people to understand about the self-care of grooming and styling their own hair. Um, empowering them to become more familiar with natural homemade products for both their hair and their beautiful melanin skin. It's so important for all of us to learn how good nutrition plays a huge role in the growth of healthy scalp, of a, of a healthy scalp and your hair. We have, we as in, you know, we have very unique hair. Why? I'll give you one reason. If you have an Afro, an Afro, you can pick it out and it defies gravity. It stays up, right? So, and you don't even have to put any spray in it. The only way the world will accept us is when we start to accept ourselves. Identity is key. We can't run away from it. There's, re there's a reason why we have unique hair. One of my mantras that I say to my customers whilst they sit in my chair, love the hair on your head, speak kindly to it. Our black or brown melanin skin is unique, unique and our kinky curly hair comes together with it. Embrace it. So, Embrace it so others can embrace you. So during this pandemic, I've had to learn to deliver my business very differently, using all, all the virtual media forums, um, platforms, access to training, etc., via Zoom, Sky, Google Teams, and WhatsApp videos, um, empowering and educating my customers how to maintain their natural Afro hair and this includes regular one-to-one -one classes, ongoing support, and they literally were pulling their hair out. And some of them, some of them lost some of their hair. Some of their hair dropped out um, because we were in lockdown for so long. Um, and I also created a podcast that's on Anchor. That's for when people couldn't get in contact with me, and they could just play it, repeat what I say. So offering them visual and practical support during the lockdown is so important. So I say all of that to say this. I've worked with Carol before. And she's not only a go-getter, she's, she's a get things done woman. She's target orientated and she, she's just got that natural God-given <laughs> gift, which she which she actually utilizes, she uses to pursue her dreams. And not only that, she shares her vision and she shares it with people, um, which normally in, it, it, it normally involves, her vision normally involves um, helping others and it's helping others to soar. If anyone knows the Bible, you know that in Isaiah 40, 30 and 31 talks about the eagle soaring, right? So she asked me to come on board. I listened to her 
I listen, listen to her dream, her vision, packed and packed with enthusiasm. She's got so much foresight. And now here I am at the launch <laughs> and it's fantastic. The idea will help young ones, the young future ambassadors of your island of Montserrat. It will help them to strive for better. It won't just be better, best, they will be brilliant with Carol's infectious enthusiasm. She will help them to, well, how would you ever be able to say no? <laughs> so ladies and gents, I bring my years of employment management experience. I bring my employment, my employer connecti connectivity, the collaboration that we talked about, working collaboratively um, with skills and training and anything that is within the protocol boundaries to assist with the growth of our future entrepreneurs, our politicians, our business people, and many more inspiring occupations to achieve the island, sorry, to achieve for the island and the wider diaspora. It's so exciting. So all I can say is watch out world. Here we come. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Gillian. Excellent overview. And I'd uh, now like to ask a few words from Judy Lockhart. Are you there? Oh, Hazel, you've got your hand up. You can unmute Hazel, you had your hand up. No. That was a mistake, Rudy. Sorry okay. about that. Is that Judy Lockhart online? Otherwise we'll go on to Yolanda Wade, then come back to Judy Lockhart if she's not quite here yet. Well, hi, okay, everyone. let's go to Yolanda. Okay. Hi everyone, good evening to us here in London um, and good afternoon to our friends in Montserrat and across the um, Caribbean nations because it's afternoon now, right? I'm trying to get my focus here because you've excused me, it's quarter to 10 here. So um, I'm, I'm ready to switch off for bed. However, I am so happy to be here um, this evening. I'm joining with my friend, Carol Ryan as Many of you have heard in um, her introduction about the Montserrat Growth Hub. Um, Carol approached me and um, we had a conversation about her vision and her plan for Montserrat. So as I said, my name is Yolanda Wade, which should give a clue. I'm a born bred Montserratian to Montserratian parents who had to migrate here in 1997 due to the volcanic situation on Ireland. I'm a trainee counselor and a certified life coach and so my interest has been always to help my people. As you can imagine, you come out of a country, your focus is almost wanting to give back to your country. And part of my story through the whole traumatic experience of the volcanic transition has been very hard. And there's something I've picked up over the years that we didn't have anyone to speak to when we came in. And as a result of that, we found navigation I've just realized I've gone on mute. So I was flowing and, uh, and no one heard me, but I can do a remix on this one. I can really do a remix on this. So let's go again. So as I said, I came here in 1997 for the transition and I found it quite difficult navigating my way through the education system here in the UK, as opposed to what I had left in Montserrat. I found even navigating the very culture because I was moving from a small knit community where my neighbor's house was my house and my house was my neighbor's house, to a metropolitan city where you don't really know much about people. So it was a culture shock. It was a weather shock because we're from a tropical country. So it was a weather shock. And so we didn't have much of a conversation helping us to navigate because it was a trauma being uprooted to this country. So we didn't have much people being here present to help us navigate that. 
And so I know that story that I came from. And so I made a decision um, just over two years ago to go back and retrain as a counselor. And so I've got an interest in helping my people and helping people around me navigate their trauma and their pain to live a life of abundance. And when it comes to our young people, I believe, and I'm a firm believer, and I've been taught this by the most humble man on this planet, I call my dad, Pastor Roger Wade. He's taught me very well that to be a great leader is to train people to be better than you are. So there's a button passing on that we ought to do. And so for me, when Carol approached me, I said to her, actually, I'm in the middle of finishing my studies. I'm in my final year. I have to think about this. But something stirred in me that made me say, if I'm going to pass on the baton, isn't it better to pass it on to the people that I know and what I was raised with? And so I'm coming on board with the Monster at Growth Hub, which is an organization I firmly believe has been called to serve the people of Monserrat in a time like this. And so as a result of that, I said to Carol, I will come on board. I will help with my young people. We will go back to the root causes of some of the trauma and some of the pain. We will unearth the beauty that lies within our people. And more so, for the people who feel voiceless, it's time to unearth your voice. Each one of you on this call is unique, very unique in your own way. And sometimes all we need is a helping hand. I was help as I was growing up in my community. And so it's now my turn to help my community as well. And so I'm here as part of Carol's team. And I, I vowed to, I said to her, as soon as I'm finishing, I'll be looking at some of the programs that I can come on board and help my nation. Why? because I feel that I was called to serve my generation and serve them well. So thank you. And this growth hub is just gonna grow from strength to strength because the mandate is we have called, been called to the nations for such a time as this. So thank you. Thank you very much for that, Yolanda. Excellent. That message is clear. Let us run with patience that race is set for us. Right, um, Angela Daniel, I'd like you to just give us a poem. Thank you. Oh, Hello. I'll just, Angela, just before you start, Carol okay. would like to say a few words. Okay. Um, Carol? You need to unmute. Yes, um, you might need to go back to Judy. Oh, is Judy, is Judy here? Back on, yeah, she was on, but oh. I don't think you saw her when Okay. Judy? Apologies. Good evening. Apologies. Judy. I've been try having trouble getting in. All right. You're here now. Is it my, is it my shot now? It's your, your turn. Uh, okay. So we haven't started yet then? No. We, we, okay. we, we were waiting for you. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much. Apologies. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Judy Lockhart. I want to say, you know, hello to everybody in Montserrat. Um, and I really want to thank Carol for inviting me to this Zoom meeting tonight. Um, my only wish right now is that I could be in the sun with you, Carol, right there on one of those beaches that you keep on boasting about. Um, whether it be Rendezvous Beach or Woodland Beach, I really don't mind just so long as the sun is shining on us and I'm topping up my vitamin D, okay? <laughs> so when opportunities like this arrive, Carol, when you ask me to be part of this huge um, task, um, I hate to let it pass me by. Um, there is nothing like giving back, giving somebody an opportunity, um, just like we were presented with opportunities when we were young. So I have decided to support this wonderful, exciting um, new initiative on the island of Montserrat. Um, I trust Carol's vision. I have witnessed her in action, fulfill her dreams many times from the planning stages right through to completion. Carol has a positive mental attitude and has had since she was a young child. Um, and she ensures that she deals with difficulties um, that arise in business methodically. I met Carol in 1986 
We embarked on a YTS training scheme together in 1986 and our careers started in the admin sector. Carol working for BBC TV um, broadcasting company and I worked for Revlon International, the cosmetic company. And we were young and we were hungry for success. Um, yeah, I remember that well. <laughs> um, our, my road, my career took a different road and I shot off into the housing sector um, where I worked in, well, my, I worked in housing for quite some time. My career took me straight through to the private sector, leasehold management, debt recovery, and I ended my housing career in supported housing, but then later on went on to become an, um, an investor in properties myself. Um, due to my care in nature in 2006, I was encouraged to go into nursing. Um, I worked in nursing as a nursing assistant for about eight years. Um, I went, later went on to work for adult health and social care sector working with substance misuse, alcohol and homelessness for eight years. Um, and in, 19, in 20, 2018, I graduated as a therapeutic counsellor where I worked in secondary school settings, supporting young people with a variety of issues. Um, and that really paved the way really for me to continue working with children in residential care, um, supporting children, um, and young people with family support, develop lifelong plans, promoting independence, health and well-being, and encouraging education, monitoring growth and development, and ensuring an appropriate nutritional diet is maintained at all time, as well as safeguarding protocols and working with a range of professional people across the board. So why am I telling you all of this? The plan right now for me is to utilize my skills to support Montserrat Growth Hub, to carry out assessments, establish people's plans for the future, support young people to achieve goals, et cetera, um, networking and secure funding. I will be collaborating with all on the panel tonight to ensure we bring a fresh change, improvements, inspiring, empowering and changing lives of all people we come into contact with. So thank you very much for inviting me and I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to everybody on the panel tonight. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for that, Judy. Ex excellent. Thank you. I'd now like to call Angela Daniel, please. Hello, good evening and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm Carol's sister and she called me up a few weeks ago and said, can I write a poem regarding young ladies? And I decided, why not? It's Montserrat. <laughs> I love Montserrat and I've been coming every so often. As soon as I can get a break, the first place I go is Montserrat. So let me start with this poem. It's called Girl Child. Girl Child, I see you, carelessly skipping, stamping your feet. In the rain, later on enjoying the great sun our Lord provides. Waiting for age to give you a chance to change the way you strive. Steadily growing, not knowing that with each knock, molds you in who you will become with time. Girl, child, young lady, you're innocently unaware. Sorry. With all the knocks and the bruises of life, you will shine. Girl, child, lady, woman, you may not see this right now, but your inner beauty is already shining. Keep going, never give up. Allow each knock to strengthen your dreams. Cry today, laugh tomorrow. God has always had your back. Another day, a stronger tomorrow. Girl child, girl child. 
you will always make me smile. One day you will awake and find you are strong, you are beautiful, powerful, funny, soft, kind. Love who you are or change. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Angela. It really encapsulates the young women of today, it really does. Thank you. And the, and the world that they have to face. And we know how difficult that journey is as well. Thank True. You True. Um, we'd now like to have a few words from Deno Baker. Deno Baker. Are you here? Let's see. Call in once, call in twice. Deno Baker. I don't think Deno's here for the moment. We can always come back to Deno. Um, Mrs. Catherine Dorset. Don't think so. So we will come back. So this is Janice Panton, MBE from the UK, UK representative Montserrat Government Office. Thank you. Good evening. Um, good evening all. Good evening, Rudy. Um, um, greetings. Um, I should first of all say um, good evening, Pastor Daniel and any members of the other members of the clergy, um, and to the um, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Mrs. K. Dorset Hector, she's still here. Um, good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always enthusiastic and delighted when new initiatives are being introduced to promote Montserrat and its people. So Carol, thank you very much for what a wonderful initiative that you, that you have with Montserrat Growth Hub. Montserrat is rich in natural resources. Our biodiversity is enviable and affords us a, new, a number of species of flora and fauna, some are, of which are endemic to the island. With a low crime rate and a beautiful environment, Mansart has a lot to offer those who call it home and live on the island and to visitors. I became a visitor at the age of 16. <laughs> I left Mansart um, at an early age and I returned. Um, well, when I got here, I, um, my, my sister and my sisters and I told our mother, when we hit 21, we're home. Can't stay in this place, it's too cold. But we did go home, but we only stayed for a holiday. It was during that period when London was bright and very, very attractive. Attractive in the form of good jobs and education. One cannot forget that. And so it's a delight to hear that a number of you followed the same footsteps that I took and my sisters took in that in addition to work, education became the second job. We continued our education, it is important. Um, with a very small population, there is often a lack of human resource capacity, both to take advantage of the resources that are God given and the opportunities that quite often present themselves. That's one of the um, difficulty with being limited in terms of networking, what you're offering and hearing most of it tonight. So I'm just really endorsing what was said, what you're offering um, with the um, resources, the human resources of, the, um, of your team is a wonderful opportunity for those who are, are on the island, even those who away because literally it gives um, inspiration to others. So it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that you're offering in being able to offer that ability to 
reach out, to extend your vision, to have that outreach that's well beyond the shores of Mansart. So I applaud you and those of you who have embarked with um, Carol on this journey, on this huge initiative. And one that's sustainable because it is something that one you build up on. Um, the ch your children will be doing the same. They'll be extending that hand to others who are not as fortunate. And it is one so something that I think you, you go forward with. So congratulations. It's, it is a wonderful thing that you're doing and I'd certainly look forward to see the development. Um, the uh, Munster office is open. We've been, we op I opened the office in 1998 and we worked alongside with the community, Munster community support, which was the um, government fund, the UK government funded um, initiative. And so the Munster's office here is open and we are ex extending um, whatever we can to those who, well, first of all, to the island, because we work very closely both with the um, government, well, we work for the, with the government of Mansrat because I work, my is a division of the Premier's office, but work with the Her Majesty's government here and with other UK representatives of the other overseas territories to ensure that Mansrat gets the best information that it possibly can. So uh, whatever we can do to assist, um, we work closely with the community groups, um, both in Manchester, Preston, and here in London, of course. So, and with the church groups, I can see Yolanda there with Pastor Wade. We work very closely with Pastor Wade. Um, yes, so there is outreach here beyond um, those that are commercial. And those, I, I was actually very pleased to hear about the counseling services that may well be offered as well to, to others, um, to people on the island. It's a great opportunity for um, a small community to have that, especially if it's overseas. You, you can talk freely and feel much comfortable and it's great for the young people. So God's blessings and I'm sure God will reward you. Thank you very much for that uh, endorsement, Janice. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, Carol, you'd like to say a few words? Got your hand up. Yeah. Unmute. I was applauding. It was a clap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Welcome. I, I better attend one of your digital classes. <laughs> Right, th thanks for that. I'd now like to call the Honourable Mrs. Veronica Dorset Hector, the Parliamentary Secretary with Responsibility for Health, Community Services and Sports. Apologies. Indeed, we were called to the nations for such a time as this. Master of Ceremonies and co-hosts, please allow me to accept the protocol as established and to recognize the presence of Mrs. Janice Ponton, head of the Montreal office. Good evening, all. I am distinctly pleased to witness the birth of a dream, a vision, the Munstrat Growth Hub, set against the backdrop of the continued celebration of women for International Women's Day 2021 and our St. Patrick's Day celebration, which began with a riveting and inspiring forum by the Munstrat Association of Toronto. This launch and Mrs. Ryan's biography encapsulates the theme, Women in Leadership, Achieving Equality in a COVID-19 World, and the spirit of the 1768 rebellion, posited by Mr. Colin Riley at the Association of Toronto's forum. Mrs. Ryan's biography illustrates that she has within her the spirit of the 1768 rebellion, 
also born in London to parents of the Windrush generation. That she's a leader who has over the years sought to achieve equality in her community in the United Kingdom by equipping young persons with the requisite skills to compete and to be treated as equals. Again, in this COVID-19 world, Mrs. Ryan has shown herself as a community leader to the varying programs of the Montserrat Group Up, the caliber of the cadre of women and men she has assembled to take the Montserrat Group Up forward. She is a family person and is supported by a strong, supportive husband and extended family, father, mother, siblings, and friends. I'm maroon at the finest to encourage intergenerational synergy and create opportunities for young persons and older persons to live the abundant life and achieve equality in this COVID-19 world. Further, the tenants of the Mother Growth Hub lend themselves to national development at the community and individual level while fostering enhanced diaspora integration. I am indeed pleased to be a part of this. The program draws on the expertise, skills, and knowledge and resources from both the diaspora and residents at home. The world's current situation demands such a hub where men, women, children, boys and girls, youth, persons of different abilities can be assisted at their varying points of needs. We have already heard of the many services that they will offer to us here in Montserrat. And I look forward eagerly to seeing these programs and more unfold for the benefit of all concerned. Today is a testimony of the strength of this girl child, this woman, this leader, having the courage to create a world of women supporting other women, working alongside men, remaining steadfast to her faith, that all things are possible with God, despite the uncertainties, the fears, the arid conditions, which one may be confronted with. The abundant life is possible with the can-do attitude. Also, reminding us of our government's pledge to work with our people at home and abroad, so together we can. The government of Montserrat welcomes and encourages initiatives that promotes the partnerships and sustainability from which our people can experience social, economical, and physical well-being. I am indeed honored to be sitting next to a phenomenal woman, to have been invited to be part of this launch. I endorse this initiative of the Montserrat Growth Hub and extend an enormous thank you and the very best wishes for every success to Mrs. Ryan, her team, Mr. Rudy Page, and the wonderful WOW women who are here tonight. The government of Montserrat is pleased and recognize its diaspora-led business. May God bless you. May God bless the Montserrat Growth Cup abundantly. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, inspiring endorsement. I'd now like to call Bishop Melroy Mead say a few words. Bishop Mead, are you there? Okay. Don't seem to have Bishop Mead at the moment. Right, at, at this point, next would have been my daughter, Leanne Page. Unfortunately, she's not feeling too well today, so I will say a few words on her behalf. For those who may not know, my, my mother was actually born in Montserrat. Esther Eleanor Lee from Lee's estate left Montserrat at a, around about the age of 18. So she fell within that uh, Windrush generation who came here to the UK. And as an 18 year old, had the challenges that teenagers had. Unfortunately, her, she died at an early age, 45 years old, but her, her spirit lives on through myself and through her grandchildren. 
And so I, I dedicated my support for these initiatives on Montserrat, known as the Esther Anna Eleanor Lee Women Power Renewal. So, so part of that initiative is to really, with such an initiative uh, that Carol Ryan has put together with her team, it's important that there is a clear pathway to ensure that this is a success on Montserrat and here internationally in the UK. And particularly at this time, because looking at Montserrat's growth strategy and the delivery plan for Montserrat um, and also its ICT policy strategy and imp implementation plan going right through to 2021, having read those documents very carefully, there is a place and a need for the Montserrat Growth Hub. And that's why you see that this particular initiative has started as an online support initiative, because we are in what's called the COVID post pandemic era and the online and the ability to use data and digital technology is essential if we're gonna transform our local communities. And also what is important in this digital space to use to promote international trade as a tool for local economic de development, which is aligned with Montserrat's economic growth strategy. And, and an integral part of that will be building the capacity of the local community, particularly young people, for them to gain those digital skills. But they must have, they, they must have belief in those skills and their creativity. And that's why the Montserrat Growth Hub is an integral part of that. Also, with the links that the Montserrat Growth Hub will have internationally, it means that it brings the Montserrat diaspora, the wider Montserrat diaspora, and, and the even bigger Caribbean, or what's now called the Commonwealth Caribbean diaspora, that will be able to support the growth hub and also create a wider market for, for Montserrat, which is, is essential. And the, the growth hub is an integral part or will be an integral part of Montserrat's skills and economic development and the capacity building. And particularly at the moment, next year, the Commonwealth Games will be held in the UK from the from the 28th of July through to the 8th of August, 2022. So Montserrat, the skills of the young people, the creativity, with the growth hub able to stride across both the diaspora and Montserrat itself, and including America, is essential. And the good thing as well, with the various initiatives uh, our colleagues at West London Business are willing to support the hub. Our colleagues at Imperial College London with their online educational resources prepared, all have given commitment to support the growth hub. And this is essential. And the wider Caribbean family, particularly all the English speaking countries. And in fact, when I talk about the um, Commonwealth Caribbean, that's all the speaking all the English speaking islands plus Guyana and Belize on the South American uh, mainland. And it's important that Montserrat does take her place as part of that. And Carol Ryan will be a key player in all that, in that domain to leverage the support for Montserrat most importantly. So, so Karen, Carol, very well done and you really deserve it and we've heard the testimonies for the last uh, couple of hours so we wish you all the best very well done um we now are going to honor mr and mrs daniel approaching 65 years of marriage on the 21st of March. 
that in itself is a is an amazing feat. Sixty five years. So, Carol, are you gonna are you gonna speak to that to this, Carol? If you can unmute. Yeah, myself and Angela. Is Angela there? Okay, Angela. Dad, I just wanted to let you know I so much appreciate you both. Um, you have been great parents to 11 of us. I can't even cope with one. <laughs> you, you've, brought us, you've brought us up, mommy, and you've prayed for us. When you see a man that could pray on their knees, that was my dad, my mum. You go to the bedroom door, you knock the door, and you walk in, and my dad's praying, you know you have to come back later. But dad and mum, you are both amazing. God has blessed you. 80, 80, daddy, you're 80, what, 87, 88? Mummy's 85. Yes. And you go from strength to strength, and God has blessed you. And we really want to say today, we love you, mum. I couldn't have done none of this without you and daddy, with your prayers, teaching us to pray our Sunday service, you know, and teaching us to love one another, no matter what we're going through in life. I would, you know, to have 11 children and bring them all up under one roof, you know, mom and dad is something to be applauded for. And I just want to say on air, I love you both. Angela's here with me. Yes. Well, Laurie and all of us, we appreciate you, Dolores, Sharon, Stephen, Easton, George, we appreciate your mum and dad. We love you. You make me want to cry how much I love you. And I'm Angela, you there? Yeah, I was just saying what makes my pair our parents very special is the unity and respect and love they showed each other. With 11 children, we grew up with a lot of love and, and respect and the, um, the prayer meetings that we used to have at home and Bible studies. I think that's what set us off how we are now. So mom and dad, love you for the respect that you showed each other and showed us and in teaching us to be who we are today. Really, really love you both. Great, thank, thank, thanks for that. Oh, my mom's crying. Oh, my yeah. mom's crying. <laughs> yeah, that's that's real, real stalwart. Sixty-five years to stick oh, together. Yeah. <laughs> what lesson for all of us? <laughs> and you know what, Rudy? There's nearly eighty-five grandchildren. Don't ask me how that's happened, but well, there's a lot of forty. Eighty-five. <laughs> yes. I'm not probably counting because of the children, but I'll. Big, the Daniels family and the Pikes family. There's the family, like as I said, the Daniels family. My dad is um, Farrell and um, Daniel, and my mother is Pike and Greenaway. Okay. The family is big. So people's been asking over the years, "Am I Mont Russian?" <laughs> I can truly say I am Mont Russian. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> 100%. I might have been born in England. That was no choice of mine. <laughs> and mine. <laughs> well, monstrations travel, don't they? Yes, we do. <laughs> we love you, right. I'm pleased to let you know, Carol, that Bishop Mead is actually on the line now. So, Bishop Mead, it'd be mm. great to hear from you. Okay. If you can, if, if we can find him to unmute. I don't know if you found him, Yolanda. Yes, I have. I think he's church three. Okay. If you can unmute, Bishop. Hello. Good day, Bishop. Yes, how are you, sir? Long time no see. I'm good. I'm good. Right. If you notice, I'm alive and well. <laughs> I'm pleased. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, first of all, let me thank you for the opportunity to um, be able to 
are speak to to you and to this platform i want to say without question that this particular forum is indeed a good beginning to what i believe could help Montserrat and its environs as we move forward to our increase our population size, increase our level of um, sustenance and development, and uh, to look towards making us becoming a bit more self-sufficient for the future. In addition to that, I believe that there are quite a number of opportunities and vacancies to which I believe a lot of our folks in the diaspora can possibly come and assist Montserrat with, especially around this time. I suppose without question, you understand the dynamics that's affecting our island. You understand the circumstances because if my memory serves me right, you are here and you will have understood some of the um, growing pains and uh, the fractures that, that have created some circumstances to which we have to have a proper diagnostic um, test being done so, so we can actively and uh, efficiently address those issues. I look forward for this particular um, transformation and uh, I hope that we can have the right persons in the right places so we can create the kind of a connection needed for the start of a, how should I put it, a new dimension of the diaspora and Montserrat twinning to become and to allow our island to become a lot more viable than what it is at the moment. But do you have a question for me, sir? No, that, thank you. That, that's a great endor endorsement. You've really encapsulated the challenge that Carol and her team have put themselves forward. And there, there will, of course, as part of this initiative be uh, a survey, a needs, a needs assessment. Yes. That, that where they can then apply their particular knowledge, skills, and expertise in collaboration with the local provision and uh, to ensure that um, that that support is there. So um, what you said is, is perfect. And it's part of the analysis that Carol herself has made as well. So thank you very much for that. And thank you for your endorsement. I'd now like to call Josiah Wade. We can have a song actually.
Excellent, Josiah. Great, a real, ta real talent. Thank you very much. I'd now like to call Hazel Riley to give the vote of thanks. Unmute, please, Hazel. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, this evening it is my privilege and pleasure to present the vote of thanks on the occasion of the launch of the Montserrat Growth Hub, an organization designed to partner with the Montserrat community at home and abroad to encourage people to dream, aspire, and give themselves permission to live a life of abundance with a clear focus for a better future for themselves, their families, by adopting a can-do attitude. Before I go on, however, I need to say that as a Monswashan who was grafted in, it is my privilege. I know that you might be wondering, what is she talking about? Well, I came to Montserrat almost 38 years ago to be the principal of the Montserrat Seventh-day Adventist School. And I'm still here. And so the Montserrat Growth Hub is not only providing a service and being supported by those who were born on the island of Montserrat or from Montserrat parentage, but those of us who have come to love this island and call it our own. I want to recognize the presence of the Honorable Dorset Hector and Janice Panton, who are here with us, not just in their capacity as leaders and women in the area of government and government services, but also in their private capacity endorsing what we are doing here or what we were doing here this evening. To the Riley sisters who delivered the territorial song, I wanna say thank you. Permit me to name them. These are my girls and I'm really proud of the work that they're doing. We have Cheslin Riley, who came to us from London, Valerie Riley in Leicester, Dr. Ranelly Williams in Pennsylvania, and Randall Solomon in Alabama. We wanna say thank you. And I want to mention, forgive me, Cheslin, that these young ladies came together almost out of tragedy because over the years they have planned to put together songs and to get a CD going, but nothing happened. Last year, at the height or the beginning of the, the, the COVID crisis, one of the Riley sisters departed this life. And that brought the group together using technology to present. And since then they have been called upon to serve even though they are scattered. Ladies, I wanna say thank you so very much.
to Pastor David Daniel, who invoked God's presence, I say thank you very much. Prayer is crucial in all that we do. Bishop Meloy Mead, I want to thank you for endorsing the work being done by this group. For the members of the hub, Jillian McKenzie, Judy Lockhart, Yolanda Wade, who explained to us their various areas of expertise and how they will be contributing in the years, months and years to come. I want to say thank you so very much for being a part of this team. We should have had another member, but she's not well, and I want to recognize her nonetheless, Mrs. Catherine Dorset. She might be there listening someplace, even though she's not feeling well this evening. Angela Daniel, we thank you for this poem, your poem, Girl Child. And also Josiah Wade, I want to say thank you. That musical rendition was so exquisite. We, it is good to see a young man playing the piano. Permit me to say that. That is one of the instruments that I love a lot. And seeing a man, a young man playing is really a treat. Ethlyn Daniel, who designed the logo for the Montserrat Growth Hub, I want to say thank you very much. And then we have two individuals who to me stand out in this Montserrat Growth Hub, Rudy Page and Carol Ryan. Rudy, I want to say thank you so very much for your invaluable assistance as part of the hub, for your welcome and introduction and the interview with Carol. And we look forward to working along with you, with your expertise and your, your connections. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And Carol, this was or is your brainchild. We have heard the work that you have done over the years. And we are so happy that you have brought your talents, gifts, skills here to Montserrat. And we look forward to being a part of all that the Montserrat Growth Hub has to offer. To those of you who took time out of your busy schedule, whether here on Montserrat or in the United Kingdom or the United States of America or wherever, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And finally, I hope I didn't leave anyone out. If I did, it was not deliberate. I want to say thank you to you also. And finally, thanks to God. How can we say thanks? for all that he has done for and through us. We thank him for wisdom, for the inspiration, for the capacity to give back to this country and our society, and for technology. He has put it into the hearts and minds of men, and as a result of that, we could be here this evening, even though we are hundreds and maybe even thousands of miles away. God bless you, everyone. And we look forward to your involvement in the hub as we move forward, serving not just the Montserrat community at home, but also the Montserrat community abroad. Thank you, one and all. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. And good night. Rudy, since we are still on, 
permit me to say, I just realized I omitted Mr. and Mrs. Daniel. I want to say thanks to them for gracing us with their presence this evening and also for the services through their daughter, Carol. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for that. And I'm now going to say good night to everybody. Good night. And all take care and stay safe. Good night, all. Goodbye. Good night. Great program. Great program. Great Thank program. you. Thank you.